Often in game development, we want to program a delayed behavior. We can do that using coroutines. Now coroutines are like regular functions, except that they return I enumerator type. So here we can say I enumerator, and now we can name our coroutine. So for example, let's say delay time, and this is our coroutine. Inside of our coroutine, we need to specify how many seconds we want to wait. We do that with a yield statement. So we can say yield return new wait for seconds, and now we specify how many seconds as a parameter. So let's say for example 2. Now when we call this function or this coroutine, we will wait 2 seconds and after that we will execute the code that's after this statement. We can also write code before this statement, it will be executed, and after that we will wait 2 seconds and execute the code that's after this statement. So let's say for example debug.log and here we will say waited 2 seconds. So waited 2 seconds like this. And now in our start method, we can call our coroutine, but we cannot call it as a regular function like this. This will not work. There are two ways to call a coroutine. The first one is to use start coroutine and we can pass it or pass our method as a parameter. And this will call and execute the coroutine. Another way to call a coroutine is to call start coroutine, but pass the name of our coroutine as a string. So here we can say delay time as a string. The difference between the two is when we call a coroutine passing its name as a string we can use stop coroutine and this will stop this coroutine so we can in any moment stop the execution of that coroutine but if we call it like this then we cannot well call stop coroutine to stop the execution of that coroutine. Now let us see the C excuse me a coroutine in action so if I go back here into unity and I run the program after two seconds, we will see something or waited two seconds has been printed out in our console. Another concept that I want to show you is called delegation. Now, what is delegation? If, for example, we have a task that needs to be executed and we don't care which class will execute that task, we use delegation. The class that's going to execute the task will subscribe to the event of our delegate. And how does that work? Well, first we will declare a delegate. So let's say public delegate void and we will name it print. And that's it. We have declared our delegate. And now we will declare an event for this delegate. So we will say public static event and we will also name it print. Same name as our delegate. And now the class, here our second class, we want to subscribe to this method here. Now we have this awake method, which is the method for mono behavior, and this is the first method that's going to be called when we run our script. Here we can use our print method to subscribe to our, well, print event here. And notice I've used a static variable for this, and now we can access it using our class name. So here we can say variables.print plus equals the print method from our class here. If we want to unsubscribe, we say minus equals, but we want to subscribe to it and we will say plus equals. Now that we have subscribed to our event, let us call the event and execute the code. So here in our class variables, we will call our print event and that event will call this print function, which is subscribed to that event and it will print out in the console handling the event. So if I go back here, I will comment this out, and by the way, this is a comment, and we use double backslash, and now we can write anything that we want, this will not be executed by the compiler. We use comments to document our code, so for example, if we have a float for X position of the player, we can comment that just to remind us for what we want to use it later on. So here we will first check if our print event is not equal to null. So here we can say if it's not equal to, or excuse me, if our print is not equal to null, meaning if it's pointing to something. So if any class has subscribed to it, it will not be null. Null means this is an empty object. But if it's not null, it means that some class has subscribed to this event. And we can call it now. So we can say print like this and we will call the event. So now let us execute that event and see it in action. So if I go back here and in order to execute it, we need to attach our second, well, class script to our camera. So I will just drag it here. And now 
when I run this program, we will see handling the event has been displayed in our console. And this is delegation. We are basically calling a method from another class. So we see that we are calling our print method in the start class of our variables class, but we are executing the method or the print method from our second class. We can also create events with parameters. So if we go back here where we declared our delegate, here we can specify a parameter. So let's say, for example, a string named message. And here now we need to call this with a parameter. So let's say, for example, handling the event again. And if I go back here, we cannot now subscribe to this event by using our print method, which does not take an argument. We need to, well, fulfill the requirements from our delegate, which requires from us to have an argument. So here we will use this print something method and we will subscribe to that method or excuse me to that event using this print something method. And when it calls this, so when we call it here, we will pass this handling event again as a parameter to this method, which will be displayed in our console using debug.log. So if I go back here again, I will clear the console. And when I run the program, we will see handling event again has been displayed in our console, which is the parameter, if I go back here, that we specified in our event when we call this to, well, basically execute the method from our second class.